there are even be some people that will fully admit to this. Like, I just like cheating. I've done it to every partner. I don't think it's going to change. Third Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Lived experience podcasts about mental health, parenting and marriage on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. Have you had much experience of relationships where one of the partners has had an affair and do you think it can be resolved? I use the Esther Perel model of there are four reasons why people cheat. One is the exit affair where they're they're done with the relationship and maybe they don't know how to break it off. So they have an affair and then their partner is the one that pulls the plug. They know maybe that's a, a line in the sand. Wait, so no, they're no. doing it to get out, out of the relationship. Yeah. And the second one is the like, we need to talk affair. Or maybe they've been unhappy in the relationship for a long time. They don't want to actually leave the relationship. Maybe they've been begging their partner to go to therapy and work on things and their partner is just not interested. So then they do something that kind of triggers a crisis. And this one might not be like a full-blown affair. It might be a flirtation. It might be a text message. Just it's basically to get the partner's attention that like, hey, I'm serious here. The third one is one that is a really interesting one that Esther Perel talks about a lot is it's not really about the relationship. It's about somebody's journey with themselves, right? And that's the one that if I see people come into couples therapy and they've cheated on their partner and they're like, it has nothing to do with my partner. My partner is lovely. Like they've been an amazing partner to me. It was just something like I was going through a hard time. Often the death of a parent can be one of those things where somebody is, I'm going through uh, being confronted with mortality and I just Whatever reason it is, there is never a good reason to cheat on your spouse ever. But that is something that it goes back to that self-respect, right? When you look at that action, do you feel proud of, of what you've done? And if not, what do you need to do so that you never are in that same position again to hurt yourself and to hurt your relationship? And so that one actually has quite a high possibility for redemption. And then the last one, it's, I use the pinky because it's the one that people on social media think is the most common, but I actually think it's the least common, which is the partner is just a sociopath and they, they will, they're a serial cheater. They have no intention of cheating, cheating. They don't want to leave the relationship. They don't want to fix the relationship. They just want to keep cheating. And that's the one that they don't often come into therapy. And when they do, there's pretty much only two choices, either stay and that's just the behavior or leave. Can you tell? quite quickly the which one of those it is yeah even sometimes and again every couple is different but i will go over this and often people will be able to just point it out very clearly oh yeah actually i've been trying to break up with my partner for we've gone back and forth for a while i knew that cheating was the one thing that we couldn't come back from i'm tired of this roller coaster that's why i did it or any of the other ones generally and there are even be some people that will fully admit to this, like, I just like cheating. I've done it to every partner. I don't think it's going to change. I just want options. Why do you think people do that? Is it just a power thing, do you think? Why do people get into I mean, a relationship is... where they've committed to one person and then intentionally go and throw a grenade in it? What I say in my book in the last chapter, it's selfishness. Right? Ultimately, that's the struggle of being in a partnership is you have to think about the other person. There are some people that have no interest in thinking about anybody else except themselves. They only want to think about what they want, what they need, and they expect everybody else to adjust around that. And those people are generally really bad relationship partners because they don't care about anybody else. So that's usually what that one is. But I suppose that these people can be very good at f fooling you into that's thinking they're not that person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's again, where it goes back to the, how do you feel around this person? If they tell you like, I've sacrificed everything for you. I care about you so much. Is that reflected in their actions? Or do they say that? And then their actions are very hurtful and their actions do the exact opposite. Um, words are cheap sometimes. I mean, they can be very helpful when it comes to expressing yeah. words of affirmation, yeah. et cetera. But you know, when it comes to infidelity, it can be more actions than words.